Ahem. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. This is Hunter here. This is The Real Pineapple. And as I was have been saying for the last couple weeks, I wanted to go ahead and try to get a review up for every single live-action Spider-Man movie before Homecoming com- comes out. So, better late than never. Got the first review here for the original Spider-Man, which, God, that's crazy to even think about. That's been as long as it, it's been for the Spider-Man movies. So, hey, for... For those of you who have not, uh, who are not super familiar with the character, or with my stance, I love Spider-Man. Spider-Man has been my favorite superhero since I was a kid. He was the second comic I ever read. Uh, First was X-Men. And I just, I love this character so much. Which is why, as you will listen to the reviews and hear the later movies, why the films have hurt me so badly. Um, But... With that said, though, Spider-Man, Spider-Man came out in 2002, so 2002, I would have been, oh god, uh, 12? Yeah, I was right around, yeah, I was like 12, 13, right around there, and I remember this specifically because this came out uh, about, a, uh, I believe it came about a month after my dad passed, and I remember seeing it and obviously going in just super bummed for obvious reasons, and watching the movie and going, this is why I love the character. This is why I love this character so much. And for me, why the character, despite the way he's been written <laughs> at some points, has just endured with me. So, uh, if you don't know the, the story of Spider-Man by now, come on. R- really? Have you never never read a Spider-Man comic? But simple, 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 simple. He gets bit by a radioactive spider, gets powers, and then has to save, and then saves the world when a other person who's developed powers, played by Willem Dafoe, Norman Osborn, uh, challenges him and tries to destroy New York. Really simple. What makes this movie so special is that it was really the first movie, probably pre-Blade, which Blade, by the way, does not get enough credit for, for really showing not only studios, but the moviegoer, hey, you can do these movies correctly, and if you watch them, you know, we'll, we'll support you, because Blade 2 actually came out the same year, so I remember. Uh, it came out a couple months, uh, about six weeks earlier than Spider-Man did, and Spider-Man really, all, all these Marvel movies, all these Fox movies, Wonder Woman, the whole superhero genre owes a really big debt to Blade 2 and the Spider-Man, because these movies really kind of broke the doors open. So, Let's just kind of break down each character. Tobey Maguire, always been a fan of his. Uh, I don't know really what kind of happened to him. It seems like he hasn't really been acting too much recently. I did see him in Pawn Sacrifice as Bobby Fischer, but that was like that was like three years ago. But he was really good in that. Uh, it seemed like Spider Man might have been the worst thing f- for him because it, it seems like it really did kind of pigeonhole him, and he hasn't really been acting too much i don't think really since the movies uh things here and there but uh, he really captured for me not not perfectly but he captured a lot of the elements i want out of a peter parker he was really sweet you could tell he just had a good heart uh dorky as hell but charming at the same time and unsure of himself because that's the thing about peter parker he's never truly sure of himself he always has that doubt you know, and it really is him just trying to navigate his life to the best of his abilities, and he really got that across. Plus, when you see him as Spider-Man, you don't get a lot of them, but you do get some of the quips, uh, some of the mannerisms, especially when he's interacting with J.K. Simmons, which <laughs> which makes me very happy uh, as uh, J. Jonah Jameson. Here's where I'm going to have a problem. Uh, Kirsten Dunst, she was always just okay to me. Even the first movie, or I think it's her best performance out of all the movies, her is Mary Jane Watson. She's always seemed kind of stuck up, and she's not like that in the comics really at all. And again, while this is her best performance, uh, as things get down the line, uh, you'll you'll hear my complaints more about her. I thought she was actually pretty good in this, though, uh, d- despite what I'll say about her when we get to Spider-Man 3 review. But she's... She's very sweet. She has a very rough uh, upbringing, which 
they touch on a little bit here. They don't go too much into it. I kind of wish they might have dipped, spent another five minutes ish on it. But you know, they they just kind of get out of the way. But she, you know, she she's in this and not not. I just wish it would have developed her a little more. But again, small gripe. Now let's get to Willem Dafoe, who I thought was just awesome in this movie. He, yes, he makes the transformation from you know. CEO to to psychopath a little quickly, admittedly for my taste, but once he becomes Norman Osborn, if there's anything we know about Willem Dafoe, he can play crazy really well, (laughs) and he knocks it out of the park here. Now, I know one complaint amongst nerds especially is the costume for the Green Goblin, and uh, let's be honest, I, I fucking hate that costume. I think that costume sucks. I hate it when I saw it opening night. I still hate it now. It looks like a really bad Power Ranger outfit. But if you watch the special features on Spider-Man, the reason why they made the costume look the way it did and everything is because like apparently Willem Dafoe wanted to do as many of his stunts as possible. So, yeah, while the costume's not great, I, I at least appreciate there's a practical reason behind it. So, you know, there's that, I guess. And then we get to James Franco as Harry Osborn. This is kind of when I started going, oh, wow, I kind of like James Franco. And to this day, I mean, yeah, he's nuts as shit, but just off the interview and Spring Breakers alone, you know, this is the end. I think James Franco's a hell of an actor, and he really shows here that, hey, he can be, you know, charming, but he can be an absolute slime ball, especially as the narrative continues to go, uh, continues to move forward and everything. And then J.K. Simmons, if there's any mistake that Sony and Marvel made with Spider-Man Homecoming, and of course I I haven't seen it yet, but if there is a a, a gripe about the movie kind of going in, it's that they didn't get uh, J.K. Simmons back. I'm sure he'll make a damn good Commissioner Gordon, but damn it, I want to see him as J. Jameson again. And fun fact, Joe Magniello played Flash Thompson. Totally forgot about that. But, yeah, just kind of breaking the narrative down, you get a little bit of Peter in high school. I think he's in high school for maybe half the movie-ish, maybe a little less. It would have been nice to see him in high school more, but they do a really good job, I thought, with the actual spider bite and just showing that, oh, wow, that would really suck, and the way he's pretty much having the shakes and shit. I actually really appreciated that. Uh, quite a bit. Um, it, it, it it's it's a little over the top, but again, if you got if you got bit by a radioactive spider, it would probably go ahead and screw you up. Uh, there's a mo- there's a multitude of just classic moments from this. Whether it's the first time speeder uh, speeder, I was combining Spidey and Peter. Whether it's the first time that Spider Man climbs the wall himself and realizes his powers, to the lunch tray scene where. You know, uh, I, I believe it's Mary Jane. Yeah, Mary Jane trips, and Peter catches everything on her tray. It, it, you know, it, <laughs> as as evil as kids are, you would think someone would notice all this shit and maybe go put two and two together and go, hmm, maybe Spider Man, but apparently not. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> but you know, sure, why not? You know, the the upside down kiss in the rain, which apparently was really awkward to film, which it looks like it would be. There, there are just so many genuine elements to this I really like and another thing I'm gonna say that I'm sure people may not be super thrilled with and I reserve to change my opinion after I see Spider-Man Homecoming I don't think the Spider-Man costume has looked better on film than it did in this original I, I love the way the costume looks yes granted how could a college kid afford you know that <laughs> that insane of a costume yes that is a leap in logic you just have to kind of accept accept the character but it looks so clean on film, and whether it's a, a dark scene or whether it's out, you know, out during the day, the costume just shines. I love the costume design on it. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, Green Goblin, even his uh, his costume, despite how I feel about it, I love the the arsenal as far as the weapons and everything, but from the pumpkin bomb to the glider itself, I mean, it all looks like I would envision it. Uh, seeing it brought to life so there's a lot of really really great stuff here and then as i kind of mentioned earlier jk simmons is J. Jonah jameson he is just he's practically a cartoon he's almost like a white daffy duck 
but he but he's so goddamn funny and he's he's such a dick to everybody who works for him um except for robbie who who i just i i love the way that robbie was portrayed there there's so much here to genuinely love i mean if there's complaints they're they're minimal at best there are some points where it's campy but if you go back and read spider-man spider-man's kind of a campy character not super campy but there are definitely points of lightheartedness to the character and i think the movie does a pretty damn good job of capturing that um w there are a couple things that, that do kind of irk me macy gray i was never a fan of macy gray <laughs> when she was popular so seeing her singing in Times square i think is kind of oh all right so macy gray was in this who thought that was a good idea um the way that uh what's his name wow i'm totally blanking uh that uncle ben um dies it it it, it could have been handled better i i thought their whole kind of blow up was pretty was pretty fake as far as how it was manufactured and everything i thought there could have been more of an emotional punch to it now what i do love is how spider-man uh, or peter parker comes up with the whole kind of spider-man idea and to fight that cage match against Randy Savage, a uh, bone saw. I thought that was great. And seeing Bruce Campbell make a cameo, uh, Bruce Campbell's great. I mean, if you've never seen Evil Dead, uh, boys and girls, uh, you need to watch that. That's one of Sam Raimi's best. So, getting kind of to the kind of wrapping it up here, there are two genuinely, I think, brilliant fight scenes in this. There is a scene where playing on Spider-Man's hero, you know, hero, her, uh, heroism, you know, you hear a scream in this burning building, it's like, help, help, and it's a Green Goblin, he just totally traps him, and this, they're fighting this burning building, and they do a good job of cutting close to the action, but not so close, so you can't tell what the hell is happening, uh, that scene is so well done, I love that scene, and they really beat the hell out of each other. There's a scene where Peter and uh, Aunt May, played by uh, Rosemary Harris, who I want to give credit to, I love her as Aunt May. Uh, Kirsten Dunst as uh, Mary Jane Watson, and then uh, Harry Osborne and Norman Osborne are all sitting down for dinner, and Norman, uh, Willem Dafoe, puts together that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and so he goes to leave, and so Willem Dafoe and uh, Harry Osborn had this conversation out in the hallway, and Willem Dafoe, Norman Osborn, just in the most dick way, pretty much talks about how Kirsten Dunst, you know, Mary Jane Watson, she, she's never going to be anything, she's just with you for the money, trust me, I recognize girls like her, do what you need to do to her, then broom her, then broom her fast, I think is how he, how he phrases it, and it's just a gut punch, and you just see her face drop, and Harry doesn't say shit, <laughs> it's really quite fucked up and she calls him on and says yeah thanks for sticking up for me and he goes oh that's my father and that's pretty much it i do really appreciate the way that how do i put this there's it it feels like a love triangle but it's not being shoved in your face unlike the third movie uh i like the fact that peter and mary jane their, their romance seems natural it's you know peter loves her he's denying it to himself but everyone around him is saying come on dude you know you love this girl and it really does naturally flow and come across in the movie and really does help build to the climax and speaking of the climax the last fight i think would probably be my top 10 favorite comic book fight scenes ever because that's where green goblin has kidnapped mary jane and he has this trolley full of kids and drops both at the same time uh, all over this bridge and you see this amazing shot of spider-man's mask where you see mary jane dropping in one side of the mask one uh, one eye and then you see the trolley dropping on the other side it's such an amazing shot and it leads to this brutal fight scene in i don't even know what you'd call it i guess like a cavern where green goblin really beats the shit out of spider-man you go ooh man you're you're worse for wear, but I, I love that fight scene, and go back and watch it. If you've never seen the first movie, I would say it's worth it just for that final fight scene alone. I love the way it was shot and how brutal it felt, and 
it looks like we're getting glimpses of that with Spider-Man Homecoming. If it's even half as good, I'm gonna be stoked. But overall, though, despite my complaints, this is a damn good movie. I can't give it a fan fucking tastic. I honestly don't think I would have given it a fan fucking tastic even the first time I saw it. But I'll give this a solid A. I I, I enjoy this movie so much, and it really did bring back uh, that that feeling of ah. Oh, I, I do love Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man so much. And the Danny Elfman score, his his kind of Spidey theme, is so well done. And it plays just at the right times where you feel, oh, man, Spider-Man's awesome. He's about to kick ass. So I, I love this movie. It, it, it's a damn good movie. So check it out if you haven't watched it yet. I, I know a lot of my friends have only seen The Amazing Spider-Man. Go Give credit to the original. It, it's definitely something that should be watched. But... Guys, let us know what you thought of the original Spider-Man. How are you feeling about Homecoming coming up? Is this still always going to be your favorite Spider-Man movie? Let me know. Uh, you can follow us here on SoundCloud at the Real Pineapple Seven Seven Five. Uh, follow yours truly on the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. You can follow Colin on Twitter at the Real O'Neill. You can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First. And you can follow us on Podbean at the Real Pineapple and like us on Facebook at the Real Pineapple. Guys, thank you so much. This weekend, we will have a review up for Spider-Man Homecoming. Fuck yes. Uh, and that's really, I think that's the only thing coming out that we are going to review because we are going to be very busy this weekend. But guys, thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you soon.